whenever ships come to port, there's always a chance for the crew to go ashore and visit the beautiful places nearby. But there is also the possibility that they will be too busy with work, and whatever free time they have, they'd rather spend resting. Sometimes you'll get lucky, sometimes you don't. So what will it be for our crew this time? Our ship is currently in port right now, here in the port of Ashdod, Israel. We will be staying here for about uh, three days for cargo operations, loading operations. And for this voyage, our cargo will be fertilizer. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, phosphate. It's actually my first time to be here in Israel. And there's actually one guy who has been offering to take us on a tour, you know, to the historical sites, especially to Jerusalem, which is actually one of the places that I want to go to. But unfortunately, we will be staying here for a short time, only three days, and we're so busy with a lot of things. So as much as I would love to go, I don't think I'll be able to. Well, let's see. Anyway, so after three days of loading, our ship will depart from this port and sail all the way and deliver this cargo to Rio Grande in Brazil. With just a short stop over at Cape Verde for bunkering operations. You know, just to top up our fuel tanks. So, I guess more or less for the rest of this short port stay, I'll be restricted to the ship. <laughs> no liberty! <laughs> In any case, I think uh, there's a nearby duty-free shop. I don't know. Uh, they say it's just walking distance. Uh, maybe I'll send uh, one of the guys or some guys to go there on my behalf and buy some food, you know, for my cabin, of course, and also for the rest of the crew. My treat. Which reminds me, by the way, if you're feeling quite generous and appreciative of my crew's efforts maybe you could treat them to some pizza or burgers or drinks and you can do so now personally simply by hitting the super thanks button this way it's not only going to be me who will be treating my crew but also you can take part in this you know it's really not a big thing but these small gestures they definitely go a long way to ensure that everyone's morale on board the ship is kept at a very high level. So once again, if you're feeling generous, super thanks. Cargo operations were supposed to be only for three days, but from Friday afternoon to Saturday night, operations are stopped here in Israel. So we got an extra day in port, which is good considering we had a three-week voyage ahead of us. So it's been about two days and cargo operations uh, are still ongoing. We probably filled about, I don't know, half of our cargo. And right now I'll be going down to the engine room because we have some jobs to do. Actually last night our refrigeration compressor kind of broke down. <laughs> well, there were some abnormal noises coming from it and the pressure is not within normal limits. So we stopped it last night and changed over to the other, the number two compressor. So today, we are going to dismantle it, check inside to find out exactly what's wrong. Let's go. Ships have two compressors for the provision ref system. So in case one breaks down, we still have a backup that's ready for use. The provision ref system is very important as it is the only means for the ship to preserve food, especially during a long voyage. What happened was that the shaft key that goes through the flywheel got worn out, leaving the electric motor continuously turning the flywheel without driving the compressor. Because of this, 
we had to investigate the root cause as to why this happened. It could simply be material fatigue which led the shaft key to become worn out, or in the worst case, the internal parts of the compressor, like the piston or the crankshaft, might be seized or damaged, so we had to check inside. Over the years, a lot of viewers have asked why we only use manual tools on board a ship. Well, for the simplest reason, on a ship, it's actually more practical compared to power tools. We do have a few power tools, but not for all tasks like turning a bolt or a nut. Things tend to get broken or lost over time. And if some power tool gets damaged, you can't just call the store and get stuff delivered within the day. Manual tools are cheap and easily replaceable. It might be slower, but in the grand scheme of things on board a ship, that time difference is negligible. The compressor has a simple enough design. The main internal parts are the crankshaft and pistons with piston rings and bearings. Pretty straightforward. Upon closer inspection, we didn't see any damage to the internal parts. So even though we had spare parts for the piston and bearings, we did not need to change them. As for the crankshaft, it didn't show any signs of being bent and had no indications that it would seize. The only thing we had to do was to remove the damaged key from the groove. And this is one instance where it's beneficial to use power tools. We didn't see any problems with the internal parts, so the conclusion was material wear of the shaft key. So after cleaning up the groove, we just fabricated another key and reassembled the compressor. Since the shaft key was worn out, the flywheel was also slightly affected. We didn't have any spare flywheel on board, so as a temporary measure, we inserted copper shims to tighten the insertion point and make sure the shaft will hold. After this job, we will raise a requisition for spare parts. It's probably going to be delivered when our ship arrives on the next port, about a month from now. After boxing up the compressor, we reinstalled it on its mounting and reconnected the pipes.
After that, we install the belts on the flywheels. Before testing the compressor, one important thing to do is to extract the air inside it. This is done using a vacuum pump. I wasn't able to get a footage of this procedure as I went up for a short while to do something else. Anyway, once the suction valve is opened, refrigerant gas will enter the compressor. One other important thing to do is to check for leaks, especially on the connecting points. We do have electronic gas detectors for this, but sometimes the sensors will give a false positive, so initially we used the old method of detection, soap bubbles. Since the inside of the compressor is now pressurized, any gas leaking will tend to blow away the bubbles. Simple, but effective. We didn't find any leaks, so it was time to test the compressor. The flywheel was turning with no sign of vibration and the pressures were within operational limits. Even though we made this compressor functional, we will put it on standby for the meantime and only for emergency use since this was only a temporary repair. We will need to wait for the new flywheel to arrive and once it is installed, the compressor will be fit for regular service. Eventually, cargo operations were finished, and now it's time for our ship to go. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to go ashore. As some of you may know, I like going to tourist spots and historical sites, and Jerusalem was one of the top destinations I wanted to visit. It was a rare opportunity for me, but due to circumstances beyond my control, I missed it. Well, that's the seafarer's life. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. Hopefully someday, I'll be able to come back to Israel and get another chance to go ashore. But for now, it's time to look ahead and prepare for our long voyage to the next port.